Okay, so let's now have a little bit of a conversation about section 5.5, which is called right triangle trigonometry. I promise you we are doing nothing different, okay? This is just looking at our trig functions from a bit different of a perspective, because so far we've considered our trig functions in relations uh, to the ratios of the side of a triangle drawn in a circle. And now we're going to just um, look at triangles, okay? So if I have a right triangle, I'll call this angle alpha and this angle beta. Okay, we know that alpha plus beta add up to 90 because we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 90. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, how do we look at the sine, the cosine, and the tangent? So first off, what I want to say is alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees or pi over 2. Those are called complementary angles, okay? Um, if I have a right triangle, now let's just look at alpha right now. This is my hypotenuse. In terms of this angle, I claim that this side is opposite of that angle and this side is adjacent to that angle, okay? Adjacent meaning next to, this is opposite. Okay, well, as with our triangles, you'll see that this is entirely consistent. Our sine is essentially our y value over our radius. I guess we can kind of look at this as a second quadrant angle. We could say that's opposite over hypotenuse. My cosine of this angle is essentially my x value over my hypotenuse, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I'm just gonna do the tangent, that's y over x, so opposite over adjacent, okay? Now, that's for this angle alpha. If I'm looking now, this is still alpha, but now we're gonna focus on beta. That's still my hypotenuse. But now I think you'd grant me that this side is adjacent to this angle and this side is opposite of this angle. So if I wanted now to look at this guy, the sine of beta is going again to be opposite over hypotenuse. This is just by definition. Our cosine is always going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And my tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, same triangle, we're looking at different angles. So if I was to look, for example, at the sine of this, isn't it the ratio of this side over this? which is exactly the same as the cosine of that guy. So my point is, is if two angles are complementary, the sine of one is the cosine of the other, which is pretty darn cool. And, okay. But again, if you wanna just look, like we're in our right triangle situation in our first quadrant. If this is my theta, this is my adjacent side, this is my opposite side, and no matter what, this is my hypotenuse, the sine is y over hypotenuse opposite over hypotenuse, okay? So I claim we're doing the same thing. We're just looking at these slightly differently, okay? So 
right triangle trigonometry is something that um, you've probably heard of, and it's pretty darn important. Okay, so if this is my angle A, suppose I have this is 10 and this is 8. I claim I can find my sine, my cosine, my tangent, and then clearly once I have each of those, I can get their reciprocals, okay? How would I find my sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent? Well, got a right triangle. If you've never used the Pythagorean theorem a lot in your life before, boy, trigonometry is where you're gonna find it, okay? We can find this length here. We have 10 squared plus eight squared is equal to that distance squared. So 100 plus 64 is r squared. And so what do we have? 164 is r squared. That's not a perfect square. Um, let's see, but we can try to simplify that. Let's see, 164, 60. What goes into 164 that we can take the square root of, um, right? Because we're going to get r to be the square root of 164. So uh, let's see, 164 is certainly divisible by 4. So that's 4 times 41. So this is 2 times the square root of 41. Okay. All right. Now that I have my sides, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's equal to 10 over 2 root 41. I would not leave it like that. Okay. I would say that's five over the square root of 41, which rationalized is five root 41 over 41. The cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's eight over two root 41, which simplifies to four over the square root of 41 or four root 41 over 41. And the tangent is sweet relief. It's y over x, 10 over 8, which is 5 fourths. And to get the cosecant, we would flip this guy. The secant, we would flip that guy. And the cotangent, we would flip that guy. All right. I know I hand waved this, but I can trust, hopefully, that you know how to flip things. So let's now do this. Uh, what I want us to do in this one is solve for the unknown sides and angles. All right. Well, here, this is 30 degrees. This is beta, this is seven, this is little b, and this is little c. In other words, we want to find angle beta, we want to find the length of side b, and the length of side c. Okay, well, I claim we know this angle because the sum of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So that's 60. OK, well, <clears throat> what can we do then to find the length of little b and little c? Well, I claim once we know one, we can get the other using the Pythagorean theorem. OK, so let's do this. The 30 degrees, I know the sine of 30 degrees. This is one of my common angles. It's one half. 
I know this, okay? Well, remember the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So one half has to be seven over little c. Well, we can solve this by cross multiplying to get c to be 14. And once we have c to be 14, we can say that seven squared plus b squared is 14 squared. And from there, we can get 49 plus b squared is 196. And then to solve for b squared, we get b squared is 147. And let's see. Uh, let, um, let's see, 147 is divisible by, let's see, certainly divisible by three. Oh, cool. That's three times 49. And the square root of 49 is seven. So I get B to be seven root three. All right, don't worry, I got more to do. My whole thing is to do a bunch of examples just so that we're sure we understand things. All right, so now I'm going to do this guy. Suppose my triangle now looks like this. That's my 90 degree angle. Let's pretend this is 65 degrees. We have AB 11 and this is beta. So now we want to find the length of A, we want to find the length of B, and we want to find our angle beta. I claim we can get our angle beta using that the sum of the angles in the triangle are 180. So we have 90 plus 165 is 155. So this is going to be 25 degrees. Notice we're not using any common um, trig, trig angles that we have, like 30 degrees. So this is when we're going to be using a calculator. So I have a calculator here. Now you want to be sure that your calculator is in degree mode right now because we're working in degrees. Notice you can switch it to radian mode. But we can now use this relationship here. Okay, I can say, for example, that the sine of 65 degrees is A over 11. So isn't A equal to 11 times the sine of 65 degrees? Now we're not gonna get some wonderful answer, but we can take 11 times the sine of 65, and we get A to be about 9.9694. All right, so now we could either use the Pythagorean theorem to get our value of B, or we could just say, well, the cosine of 65 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So we could find B to be 11 times the cosine of 65 degrees. and plug that into our calculator. And we're gonna get about 4.6488. Okay. So what if now I do the following example? Suppose I tell you that a ladder is 33, feet tall, and it's leaning against a building. So here's my building. 
here's my ladder that's 33 feet tall, is leaning against the building so that the angle between the ground and the ladder, okay, this is not drawn to scale, my friends, is 80 degrees. Okay, 33 foot ladder makes an angle with the ground of 80 degrees. And what we wanna know is how high does the ladder reach up the side of the building? In other words, we want this value here. Well, what we do is we ask ourselves, what trig function relates this angle with these two sides? Well, notice this angle, we know we want to find the opposite side and we know the hypotenuse. So the way I would find that is I would say that the sine of 80 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So it would be 33 times the sine of 80 degrees. And not that we really care what our answer is necessarily, but we can certainly compute that. You should get about 32.4987 feet. Notice drawing a picture is huge, okay? Let's do another one. Suppose I tell you the following. Suppose I tell you that the angle of elevation to the top of a building in New York is found to be, so I'm gonna, I'll write this out. Angle of elevation to the top of a building in New York. In other words, I guess we're supposed to think it's going to be a tall building is found to be nine degrees um, when we're one mile away. And we want to find the height of the building. Okay. In other words, when we're one mile away, let's pretend this is one mile. I'm going to put it in terms of feet. 5,280 feet. We know that the angle to the top of the building is nine degrees, and we want to know the height of the building. Well, what trig function relates this angle and these two sides? I claim it's our tangent. Tangent of nine degrees is opposite over adjacent. So I can take 5,280 times the tangent of nine. Fortunately, we have a tangent button in our calculator. So 5,280 times the tangent of nine. We're going to say that this building is about 836.27 feet. All right, I'm just going to do um, two more examples, okay? Um, and just so that you have it, this is number 11 at the end of this section, and this is number 13 at the end of this section, if you want to look in your book. Um, what we have is that a radio tower is 400 feet from a building, okay? So we're gonna have a building and we're gonna have a radio tower. And we know that the distance between those two is 400, okay? From a window in the building. So here we are in the building, wherever that is. A person determines that the angle of elevation, okay, the angle of elevation from that window to the top of the tower is 36 degrees. So I'm going to draw a straight line. 
So we're given that that's 36 degrees. And that the angle of depression, in other words, looking down to the bottom of the tower is 23 degrees. We want to know how tall is that tower? Okay. So again, we're given the distance between these two. This is my radio tower. That's the radio signal. Well, I guess it would be waves. <clears throat> we know this distance is 30, is 40, is 400 feet. We know if we're looking from a window in the building to the top, it's 36 degrees. To the bottom, it's 23 degrees. Can we find the height of the tower? Totally. Notice we have two right triangles. If I take this top right triangle, essentially I have this is 400 and this is 36 degrees and I want this height. If I take this bottom right triangle, this is 23 degrees and this is 400 and I want this height. And I think you'd grant me if I take this height plus this height, I'm going to get the height of the tower. Well, what trig function relates this angle with these two sides? It's our tangent. Tangent of 36 degrees is opposite over adjacent. And tangent of 23 degrees is also opposite over adjacent. So this value is gonna be 400 times the tangent of 36 degrees. This value is gonna be 400 times the tangent of 23 degrees. And, and then I'm gonna add them together, okay? So what do I have? I have 400 times the tangent of 36. And I'm going to add that to 400 times the tangent of 23. And if you add those up, you're going to get the total height, which is about 460.41 feet. All right. One more example at the end of the section. This is number 21. And what we want to do for this one is find the length x. And I'm going to attempt to draw this triangle. I think you've learned thus far that my drawings are not ever to scale. <laughs> All right. Suppose this length is 115. I have this angle here to be 56 degrees and this angle right here to be 35 degrees. And I want to find just that distance. Can we do that? We totally can. Okay. I'm just going to call this little distance A and this entire distance to be B, okay? So notice I can find this little distance right here because right here, I have a right triangle. I can say that the tangent of 56 degrees is 115 over A. So A times the tangent of 56 is 115. So solving for A, I can get that. Now, I can't just find this one little distance X here because it's not a right triangle. However, I can find this total distance here because that is a right triangle. In a similar manner, I can say that the tangent of 35 degrees is 115 over this whole length B. Going in a similar manner, B times the tangent of 35 is 115. So 
I can solve that for B. So if I get this whole length and I subtract off this length, that will give me exactly what I'm looking for. So B is 115 divided by the tangent of 35. And I'm just going to go three decimal places. So 164.237. My value A that I want to subtract off is 115 divided by the tangent of 56 degrees, which is 77.568. So I take 164.237 minus 77.568. I am going to get this length x to be about 86.669. All right, I hope that was helpful.